Hey guys, so uh, I just installed the CarPlay module. As you can tell, sort of <laughs> pieces and parts are everywhere. So I'm, I just finished diagnosing an issue I was having. Um, but yeah, you gotta take the whole dash part, pop out the airbag after three eight millimeter bolts from inside there. You pop out this airbag a little bit. You undo that seven millimeter bolt that seven millimeter bolt. bolt. <laughs> uh, these two panels pop out. So if you have a gas removal tool or something like that, flathead screwdriver, carefully, obviously, uh, should be able to pop those two out. Um, and then down here, you pop out that piece. You just pull it out. I mean, use the pry, pull it out. It's just two tabs. And up underneath, you got that hole there and a hole over on the other side right there um those two come out and then this whole panel which I'm trying to remove uh there's a cable right here where my middle finger is then another one up top because you know for that button uh, i'm gonna set this down real quick you gotta kind of hold the bottom of this up and disconnect the cable with one hand there's a tab that you push up from the bottom on, and that slides. Well, it usually slides. There we go. Obviously, you'll lose control of all this. Um, I never really could figure out exactly how that comes undone for the traction control, but I just slide this up on the dash and now it's perfectly up out of the way so no biggie there um this is still somewhat disassembled there's a lot going on back here um but yeah i will take another clip here in a second so this part's a little cattywampus because i've already disassembled everything and installed the module and all that there's some extra cables back there um i'm not exactly sure i'm gonna set you back up here um Let's get this over. Okay, so you're gonna need to push down on a tab on the back of the one cable you saw <laughs> with the weird connector. Push down. It's pretty firm, so using a flat head screwdriver or something like that to push it down would be good. Um, you're pushing down the tab that's right there and then this gray piece will flip over that. So now, you push all the way down like that. Pull that piece out. Push the tab down on this little USB connector right here. Um, you're gonna have four screws, two right there, two right there. You pop those out and then this piece just pulls straight out. It's got that connector there, goes into the back of this. Then you have these two cables here, which are included in the kit. I'm gonna unplug those real quick so that way I can show you where they go, roughly. Um, basically, so you can see the photos in the listing. Um, this is the SYNC 2 module here. Um, it's the back side of the new one. Uh, the old one looks like this on the back, so it's missing couple of these key connectors that they have so you can add cameras and all that fun stuff so set that back there got a little screen protector on there so it's an extra glass piece um these two cables are the factory ones so you can just kind of touch this, this side um as best you can i guess it's kind of hard to there we go uh this one here they got a microphone included that's this bunched up cable right here I just have that running around over here and I'm gonna tuck it in all nice. Um, I've already bolted this thing back up, so give me a sec. I'm gonna undo these four screws right there, there, and there. And then I'll show you how it plugs up in the back. Okay, so I've got all the screws undone. Um, this, for reference, is the old one. You'll notice that right here is where the ribbon cable plugs in and this is where the other ribbon cable plugs in. Um, you'll be undoing those, this one, You'll, you'll, well, here, I'll just show you. 
flip it over. So this one, the new module has that orange cable that plugs into that spot, not the one back there, like I originally thought it was. That's why my touchscreen wouldn't work. But the spot where it's at is where it should be. Then there's this ribbon cable here. You just pull this black piece up. It goes up in a 90 degree angle. And then you just kind of wiggle the ribbon cable out from this assembly here. So um, this is obviously what it will look like. Finished product with the new module in here. Obviously a lot more beefy than the original Sync 2. Um, yeah, so those two ribbon cables go in there. Let's get that out of the way. Um, to reassemble this, you have four T10 torque screws. One right there, here, here, right there, and right there. So you put those four in, and then these brackets go back on as well, which they should look like this they attach to these holes right here oh sorry like that it's a little difficult because i got the center console in the way sorry no it's those two down there you screw those in with uh two torx so t20 torx screws these black ones right here and then same applies for the other side point of reference is this piece right here uh, marks the bottom so you want to make sure that this stud piece is on the top so no stud down here so i've got the cd drive out now here uh, i had those two bolts on each side and then you actually have this screw back here that goes through this hole forgot to mention that that's just chilling right there um just a phillips head so Super easy. Um, anyway, the two cables that come with the kit, you need to plug into the back of this. You'll notice that there's a male connection and a female connection. The female will plug into, for, for both cables, will plug into the OEM cable. This is plugged into here originally, but obviously you pull that out, plug it into here. And then same goes with this one. That's OEM, this is the new cable. You don't touch those two. Those are good where they are for the antenna for, I think, Sirius and just you know, regular FM. Um, this cable here, which is the far left one, has, I think this is for like a front camera or something like that. And yeah, reverse detect, AC 12 volt, ground, all that kind of stuff. So there's all that, those goodies right here. Um, yeah, this you plug into the left side down here in the back of this panel of the new module and then this one this other cable here goes down to this and this is what the microphone sorry this is what the microphone plugs into and this just goes into the back of the module there so those are the two cables that come with uh, as well as the microphones so at three um, now let's see what the inside looks of this thing so I've got these two brackets secured back on with the T20 Torx bolts or screws. Um, you want to make sure that the one with only one hole, technically, is on the bottom, which is indicated by this little piece right here. Uh, and then the piece of the notch, like that, on both sides, is on the top part where it's smooth. So same thing over here. Um, I got the CD player screwed back in with the two 7 millimeter on both sides and then the Phillips head way there in the back. Uh, I've got the cables tucked up in there. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that this USB cable right here, I tucked it back behind the CD player. It goes right here. Looped it around real quick, and then I tucked it down to there. It's a little blurry, but yeah, close enough. Uh, but that basically goes out to right here. So you can adjust the length as needed. I'm just going to have it there for right now since I've been testing. Um, it's got wireless CarPlay, so you don't even need to plug in. Um, so, yeah, you can just do it that way. Have this as just a charger cable so it's quicker. Um, so now you're going to plug this cable and this cable into 
the back of this in their respective spots. As you can tell, one's bigger than the other, so it's literally impossible to mess that up. Um, so hopefully you don't. Uh, yeah, plug those in, and then I'll show you the next clip, which this will be put back into there. All right, so I've got these reconnected in here and got to hold this up, but um, that piece there, you're going to take these four Phillips head screws, thread them, or just drop them into all those four slots right there. And then you're going to plug the bottom of that in to that connection right there. It's got two little pilot stubs that go into holes left and right of that connector. Then those are where the screws go in. Um, you wanna make sure that those connectors are at the bottom part, like down here on the module because um, it'll be like a millimeter or two off to the side left or right, I can't remember which side, and it won't plug into this connector here or slide into the holes. So you'll know, <laughs> so I'll do that now. Okay, so I've got this screwed in here with those four longish screws. Uh, next, you gotta plug these two OEM cables into the back of this thing here. That light gray one, you're not gonna have anything plugged in there, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna set this here, so I plug this in. There we go. Perfect, all right. So this cable is just long enough. You slide into there, make sure this is all the way horizontal to the side. Push down. Once it's clicked in, it's gonna go up there. And then to really secure it, you're gonna, sorry. There we go. Pull that over there to click it in. Then that piece pops in right there. And as you're guiding this in, you'll use that top stud right there on both sides, uh, as shown earlier, to guide it in. It keeps wanting to fall out. <laughs> Um, and you'll take the four seven millimeter bolts, put them on those two sides, and then over here and down there. So before you start popping in panels, uh, you obviously want to test, make sure that the module's working right. Um, it, I had to unplug the orange cable because I plugged it into a different spot and so my touchscreen wouldn't work. Um, but I got it figured out, so obviously it's working great now. Um, Tuck the microphone roughly where you want to put it throughout the cable and all that fun stuff. Uh, same with the USB cable, this guy right here. And then I tucked it down into that corner down there, coming out there. Um, so that way, you know, it's ready to go. You just haven't snapped everything back in just yet. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and test it. I'll just start the truck so I don't have to worry about battery. Um, but should come up like normal, like that. So I disconnected from Bluetooth because obviously it wouldn't work out very well. Um, but as you can tell, everything works right. The touchscreen is a little hard to press because I have a screen protector on there. Uh, climb it. I'm going to turn that off here. That's working. Turn the AC seats. That type of thing off so we got that and then press the home button here so you're here um, and if your computer if your phone is not hooked up currently uh, and it doesn't go to carplay automatically you just hold down the home button like three seconds you'll hear a mechanical click this is the actual home button here or home screen click on carplay it should take you here automatically but you know um, Google Maps super responsive for what it is a lot better than the car radio i have in my other car um so that the forward button takes you to their screen here um i don't have an android phone so i don't think i can use either of those um but basically you can scroll along here you set up your bluetooth for bluetooth carplay right there um haven't really played with that stuff just yet settings haven't looked at that but you hit edit exit you hear that click takes you back to the sync too works and looks like normal so there we go so i've pushed this into place there's two clips down here you just push it in feels very nice and secure the reason why you have to pull both of these out is for that one and this one 
There you go. Uh, just a couple seven millimeter, you know, typical screws for interior Ford stuff. Um, you'll just screw those two back into there and there, and then you will be done with this part, um, with the exception of this piece right here. This just two clips, pops underneath, and pops into place, which I'll just do that later. Um, but yeah, once that's pushed in, you will then go over here. Like I said, I have my microphone right here. So I'm gonna route that. I'm just gonna set it somewhere in this area, I'm not too worried about it. And then I'll pop that into place after that screw is put in. And I'll put that screw in over there, pop that piece back in, and then I'll show you all the airbag part next. So for this part, you're just going to push in the bottom left and bottom right. Perfect, nice and flush. Now you're gonna put the seven millimeter bolt there and right there. Don't drop the bolt because I just had to completely pull this piece out and unhinge or unbolt the entire radio, lift it up and pick the bolts off the top of the CD drive. So be careful with that one. So this is popped back in place. I've got the two bolts popped back in or just bolted back in. Uh, this piece, I don't really have any need for it to be out anymore, so you can just pop that back in, just like that. All good down there. That will be the last step, because there's extra bolts you gotta do. Basically, you're just sliding that back in, pushing it in, making sure that it's snapped back in, and there's three bolts up underneath. This part, however, is a little bit different, because I've got the microphone running around and eventually I will be closing it and then the microphone will just be kind of chilling right here, which I'm fine with. It comes with this little handle, which just slides in. Might be hard to do with one hand, but anyway, you get the gist of it. This slides into that, that slides into this, <laughs> and then that's some sticky adhesive right there. So you can stick it right there if you want to. Um, I just am not a big fan of adhesive, um, but yeah. I will work on getting that. I have the wire routed from like up here around the vent down to here. So uh, I'm gonna get that tidied up real quick and then I will continue on to that part. All right, so this was just popping into place. You kind of have to pull up on this plastic piece here. It also just pops into place um, just to route down the cable here. And then you will pop that back in, push this in. So now it's all locked into place. So now we're gonna go over here Pull this back out, pull that tab on that side, and that tab on that side, which I'll need to pop that back on. <laughs> um, and then do the three eight millimeter bolts for the airbag, which like I was showing, you just pop that back into place, obviously very carefully, because that is a big kaboom in there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go around to the passenger side and do that because that makes more sense. So before we put the airbag in, there are two gold screws that you're gonna put there and there once this is already snapped back into place. Now we're gonna work on getting the airbag put in. Slide that in. Push the down bottom part first. There we go, all done. Now we just need to put these three eight millimeter bolts into the bottom, which I will show here shortly. It's up in that silver box, base or not box, silver bracket. So now that we have the airbag in here, I went ahead and put those three screws in, which you will see up top there in that silver bracket. Um, tighten them up pretty good because right above that is your air compressor, not your air compressor, airbag. <laughs> and you obviously don't want all of that coming out at you. But besides that, all this is put back together with the exception of these two screws there and there. And then you simply just pop this piece up under there like that. And then you're all done. All right, so at the end of all this, you're gonna have this extra bracket that they included, which I don't know what application it's for. It's probably a different model or something. 
um, and your old sync 2 module here so dinky and small uh yeah this is it put all back together got the microphone stuck over there pretty sure it's just for siri anyways so i'm not too worried about that being in good section area this piece is missing i'm i'm working on a other project over there that's where those three screws are still there for um that's popped back in it's all together everything is back in its place so now i'm going to give you all an idea how this works boots up like normal takes it over to sync 2 put it in reverse works perfect it's a little bent because previous owner hit their trailer <laughs> um, if you hold the home button there for a few seconds you'll hear a mechanical or electrical click uh, you'll have CarPlay, Android Auto, mirroring, Bluetooth, video, right view, all that kind of fun stuff. My phone is hooked up via Bluetooth, so as you can tell, cable is right here. Going over there. Well, I killed that last video because CarPlay was connecting Bluetooth. Uh, this is the cable I would be using for hardwired, but it's, you know, not being needed because this has wireless CarPlay. Um, yeah works great um really good refresh rate for what it is um let me send that over there and drag that around a bunch google maps is just kind of goofy in its own way um to get back you press the forward sync button there this takes you to its home screen where you've got music carplay android auto the bluetooth setting was over there video right view exit settings haven't messed with that yet i'm gonna take a look at it real quick Navigation volume Just some cool stuff like that. Hit the home button, takes you back here. Yeah, CarPlay will take you over there. Uh, Bluetooth, you're gonna need to set up your phone. There we go, so blurry. Uh, for wireless CarPlay to work, hit exit. You'll hear the electronic click. It'll take you back here to the main homepage where everything works as it should, like it's a regular Sync 2 device. So there you go. I uh, love this kit so far. Can't wait to test it out on a road trip and just use CarPlay in a vehicle that didn't have it originally. 